so hello, goodbye, and hello again. And welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. So, anyway, I thought I would revisit radio circuits because this is something I'm also interested in. I'm not just all Tesla coils and high voltage. I find radio circuits pretty interesting as well. So I've built up a little Super Heterodyne AM receiver, but there's just one vital component missing, and that is the local oscillator. So to fill in for that, I've got this signal generator, and this is going to be the local oscillator because I'm going to do some experiments. Now there's going to be an extremely long and waffly bit about how the Super Het system actually works. So, if I'm starting to bore you, then feel free to skip this part. And I'm not enjoying this either, because I absolutely hate, I loathe, I detest explaining things. And of course I've got to listen to myself yapping on and on and on when I come to edit this thing. But anyway, here's how it works. What I've got here is a coil of wire wrapped around a ferret bar, and this is what pulls in the radio stations, and it's tuned by this variable capacitor here. Now, usually in a super het radio you'll have two coils. There'll be one that's connected to the variable capacitor, which tunes the thing, and then there's another coil which actually picks up the radio stations, and that goes into the rest of the circuit. But here I've simplified things and I've just combined that all onto one coil, just to keep things simple. Also, if you have a really posh radio, like, say, one that can pick up shortwave, you'll have additional sets of coils for those frequencies, but yeah, we won't go into that right now. Anyway, let's say there's a radio station broadcasting at 1 MHz, and I've got this tuned to 1 MHz. So, What's going to happen is, is it will pick up that 1 MHz station and it will reject everything else. Well, I say it rejects everything else. It will pick up some of the adjacent frequencies, but not so much. To put it simply, it's kind of a pre-selector, if you will. So, we've got our incoming station. And that goes into the circuit where it is mixed with a frequency from the local oscillator, which in this case is this thing right here. And this mixing produces a third frequency, and on that third frequency we get a copy of the station that it's tuned into. So basically, we've taken that station and converted it to another frequency. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's a bit stupid, what's the point of that, you know, why would you want to do that? It's doesn't seem to, you know. I thought the same way myself when I was learning about this stuff, but there is some pretty good reasons you would want to do that. Well, one thing is, that third frequency that you get never changes. No matter where you're tuned, it always stays the same. So what is that third frequency? Well, it is the difference between the frequency of the incoming radio station and the frequency of the radio's local oscillator. And in most AM radios that will be either 455 kHz higher or 455 kHz lower than the frequency that you're actually tuned into. So that makes that third frequency 455 kHz because that is the difference between the two frequencies. The other reason this is a good idea is because we need to amplify that quite a bit. However, it's much easier to build an amplifier that will amplify one frequency or one narrow band of frequencies than it is to build an amplifier that will amplify a whole range of radio frequencies. So what we have here is in fact a highly tuned amplifier designed to amplify one narrow band of frequencies. And then it's demodulated here by these two diodes, pretty much like you would get in a crystal radio. And, well, it really is that simple. And another really good thing about that 
is it makes the tuning really selective so you don't get a whole bunch of stations all coming in at the same time because let's face it who wants that when you're listening to the radio now just one more waffly bit before we go into demonstrating this thing I just like to point out that not all radios use 455 kilohertz as the frequency difference I mean most of them do but some of the older radios they were they used 470 kilohertz and uh, some of the other radios, you know, it could be like 450 kilohertz. Some radios, it could be, you know, it could be one megahertz for all you know. But the way it works is exactly the same. But anyway, I think I've waffled enough. So let's see this thing in action. I'm going to plug this in. I mean, connect up the batteries. You might be able to hear something already. So now I'm going to turn on the quote unquote local oscillator and now let's connect this to the radio circuit and we have static Three nine nine or older from and now PC World. we have a radio station up and transfer all your data get started with a new laptop find out more online at Curry's PC World we start with you trading conditions apply now like I said before this only apply. is a sort of a like, pre-selector with this um, the clone of the capacitors on the pre-selector so as it picks up some of the frequencies either side of where it's actually tuned we can get another radio station without having to retune this, but just retuning the local oscillator, which is what I'm going to do right now. Hopefully I won't get shafted for any copyrights on this. Let's see if we can find another station. I'm sure there's one around somewhere. Of course, just because I'm trying to shoot a video, let me see. Ah, oh, there's something. It's quite faint. So let's just try to tune the antenna a little better. There we go. But that's not my kind of music, so. Now we're going to take some measurements. We're going to see what the IF frequency is and we're going to have a look at some waveforms. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've got my oscilloscope connected just before the point where it's demodulated, so it's connected right there. Okay, so I think you can see the output from the third and IF stage been lovely weather just until before it's demodulated. The and as you can see, the, the waveform is responding but, uh, have a in time with the audio. I'm going to turn up the time base so we can actually see... I managed to persuade her to, to join me for one of my trips down to uh, the old pirate bay here. Our supposedly 455 kHz waveform. I have so many fond memories. Frinton on Sea. Okay, so I'm going to go up and down the tuning now, and you'll see that the distance between the peaks stays the same. And because the distance between the peaks stays the same, that means the frequency is staying the same. So, we tune in. And see, the frequency does not change. They're exactly the same distance apart. Let's go to another station. Let's go to this one here. Let's me just retune my antenna. And you can see they're the same distance apart. Let's just go to one final station. One, one right about here. Let me just retune. Actually, all we've got here is static, but you can see again, it's the same. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to try and find out what the IF frequency of this radio is. And for those of you who don't know, the IF frequency is that third frequency that we talked about. So that's the frequency that gets amplified by the IF amplifier. Just so you know. And my camera battery is running out already. 
Now I've got the frequency counter, I mean the frequency generator set to pretty much round about the 400 kilohertz region. Actually that's on about 420 something kilohertz at the moment. So I'm just going to sweep this up and down until we get the most response out of the oscilloscope. And I've got the output set to as low as it can go because this does have an AGC, so I'm going to try to defeat that. So, let's see what we get. Sorry about the mess in this place, but... Okay. Seems to be around about here, maybe? Seems to be about there we get the most response. Although I cannot tell what that is from the di just the dial there, so let's measure it. And according to the meter's frequency counter, it's 0, 0.000 hertz, so something seems a bit wrong there. Now, I've got this meter connected to my scope's Y output, because I'm using the scope as an amplifier, because there is no way that this meter is going to be able to measure an output this low. It's just not going to be able to do that. So, I'll turn up the scope sensitivity. Alright. And there we are. 447 kilohertz. So it's a little bit off, but it's in the ballpark. So that basically means that when I have a radio station tuned in, the frequency difference is 447 kilohertz, not 455. But we can fix that. Okay, so I've now got the frequency generator set to 455 kilohertz. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to modulate in a 1 kilohertz sine wave, or roundabouts. Make that nice and loud. And I'm going to change where I'm scoping the waveform to the output. So I'm now scoping the output. I can just get that in there. So all I've got to do now is adjust these transformers until the one kilohertz or roundabout-ish tone is at its loudest. You can hear it very slightly. So I'll just adjust the first IF. Okay, we need to go a little bit. I'd say right about there. And now, just a final adjustment while receiving a radio station. Just to get the best sound quality. I'm not going to adjust this one, but because that one is tuned to the 455 kilohertz. Like to share some pictures of that, Jenny? That would be much appreciated. Uh, you can have this one yep, too. Yeah, that seems to be coming in pretty good. The station seems to be playing some good music. This is the absolute classic rock party. Well, I won't play too much of that because I'll probably get screwed for copyright, but there we go. So, anyway, where am I going to go from here? Well, what I want to do eventually is make this into a shortwave radio, but obviously I'm not going to be able to use this quilt. Now, I have tried to tune into some shortwave bands, but with this coil, that's just not going to happen. I'm going to need a smaller coil for that, and I can make one of those. Also, long wave, I will need a much longer coil, obviously. However, I am really quite happy with how this is performing so far. So next time I'm going to try and modify this so we can get shortwave and longwave reception. Also in a future video I'm going to be revisiting going to be revisiting this radio, see if I can make that work. That's it for now, so until next time, goodbye. And this video waffling along has already been over 20 minutes, would you believe? And this is without 
the waffling that I did about how this actually works. So anyway, until next time, goodbye. And finally, because I know I'm going to get hammered with questions about this if I don't post it, here is the schematic.